So today we're going to cover part one of the document object model. In this part, we're going to just kind of tell you what it is, explore it a little bit, and what the document object model does is a way is to teach you a way to manipulate the browser itself. Instead of just using like these window alerts and things like that, we're actually going to manipulate an actual document. And if you remember from our first part, uh, we talked about the difference between window and document, right? If you forgot, go back and watch that one again. So we're going to manipulate the objects inside the document and we're going to talk about node lists. So let's get started. So when we talk about the document object model, it might be referred to as DOM or DOM elements, uh, D-O-M. And so whenever the browser loads a web page, we have this map and it stores it in memory and everything in its memory is considered part of this DOM tree. So if you look at HTML, you have your head tags, your body tags, all the other tags. And you want to consider all of those DOM elements as nodes and all of these nodes exist on a tree. So we call it the DOM tree or we might call it traversing the DOM tree. Traversing the DOM tree is basically saying we go from one element to another. So we talk about nested elements. We talk about this exists inside of this and this other thing exists inside of another element. For instance, paragraph tags live in the body tag and the body tag lives inside of the HTML tag. When we talk about DOM tree, and when we take a look at HTML code, it's just like I said, one part is connected to another, much like branches on a tree, and the objects are connected together all along these branches. And again, these particular objects are called nodes. So when we talk about calling the node, or manipulating the node, or adding the node, we're talking about elements that exist in the DOM tree. So for example, a paragraph tag is a node in the DOM tree. The body tag itself is a node on the DOM tree. So you should understand that as things live inside of other things, they're called nodes. For example, like list elements, paragraph, classes, tags, things like that. They all exist in the DOM tree. And whenever we we call things, we use, we use these methods. So methods that find elements in the DOM tree are called DOM queries. So if I'm asking or if I'm looking for something, I'm going to traverse the tree and look for something so for example if you are looking at a tree that has apples on it and you want to uh, get an apple you're going to query the tree goes i need an apple and in a perfect computerized world the, the tree would give you the apple so when we work with an element more than once we use a variable to store the result of this query so here's an example var x equals document dot get element by id one we're getting an element by its ID and the ID is called one. If you forgot what the difference between classes and IDs are, you'll go back to CSS lesson and remember that we have classes and ID. So we can assign IDs to HTML and we can call it. So we're getting its element by its ID value. For instance, if your name is Casey, your ID is Casey and I say, Casey, I need something from you. And then Casey would give that to me. So types of DOM code. So we can do document.getElementById. And if you notice those quotes, we have the ID. And we're basically going to select individual elements given its value of its ID attribute. And you have to have an ID attribute in order for it to be selectable. We have things like query selectors. And query selectors, all that does is just grab CSS. So we use the CSS selector syntax that would select one or more of these elements. And this method returns only the first of the matching elements. It doesn't return all of them, it returns the first one. For example, this query selector P selects the first paragraph of the page. And we can manipulate this too. Notice the capital letters, by the way. It's important that you understand that that's not syntactically wrong. This is syntactically correct. Meaning, I purposefully put the capital S there Right? Just look at, go back to get element by ID. Notice the capital E, the capital B, and the capital I. Those are required. You can't use lowercase letters. You have to use uppercase letters. This is a very strict syntax. So here's a query selector example. If you want to do uh, code this now, you could. So we say document.querySelectorP.innerHTML equals I've been replaced. We're going to select the first paragraph tag in this HTML document and we're going to replace it with the value I've been replaced. So why don't we practice this now? 
So open up Replit, open up your editor, uh, let's get started. So here I have this practice HTML document, and why don't we go ahead and drop a paragraph tag in here, and we'll say, hello and welcome, okay? So we'll close it off, and if I run it, hello and welcome, all right? All right, so why don't we practice this now? So go ahead and open Replit or whatever you're using, and in your HTML, you're gonna have this paragraph tag, right? Hello and welcome. If you don't have it, go ahead and write that in. And then when you're done, go to the, so if you run it, it says hello and welcome. Then go to the script.js and let's manipulate it. So we'll say document.querySelector, capital S. What are we selecting? The first paragraph tag. So we'll say p, quotes p. And then we'll do dot in our HTML because we're gonna replace it. And you can say goodbye. If I hit run, it is now changed to goodbye. Now let's talk about getting elements by its class name. So let's say you have more than one class tag in your HTML docket, meaning you have, let's say you have eight paragraph tags and they all have the same class, uh, that's fine. So what the get elements by class name does is, we can select one or more elements given the value of their class attribute and then we can change it. So here's what I mean. Let's take a look at this. So if we say document.getElementsByClassName, uh, hello, you should, we're actually selecting the second one, right? See the bracket one? Well, if you think about code, we're actually saying that we're selecting the second thing because remember we count from zero. So it's zero and one. And I think there's an error here because that hello should be in quotes because we're calling the class name. If you've been watching this podcast and you should, you should understand this. So we're gonna replace it. And here's, let's do some sample code. And let me tell you what I mean. So if we look at this, in my index.html, I have two things. I have a class, two paragraphs, and they both say hello and welcome, right? Uh, and they, and pay no attention to the right side because I've already written the code. So they both say hello and welcome. And they have two classes, and they're both with a test class. All right, class equals test. But in the script.js, we have this. I'm gonna get the second one and replace it with whatever I want in your HTML. And as I said earlier, it's test square brace one. Remember, if we're counting from zero, zero is the first thing, so one would be the second thing, right? Zero and one. And if you ran this now, you should get the same output result. So let's recall again what a node is. And I found this picture online and I wanted to share it with you. And it's a hierarchical order from left to right. So HTML would be the first thing. The head and the body live inside of HTML. The title, the script, H1, all these other tags is inside the head and the body, okay? So just think of it like that. When you think about the node tree, when you think about I'm sorry, the DOM tree, and when you think about nodes, that's all that really is. So all the node list is, is a collection of element nodes. We start from zero, because we always start counting from zero, okay? If you had to pause this, then you know pause it and then come back. But remember that node lists are not arrays. So they look like arrays, and they're numbered like arrays, but they're not arrays. They're just a type of object called the collection. And there are many functions of a node list, and we can loop through the node, but for now, why don't we just kind of stick to the more basic stuff, and we can learn about more complicated things as we go on. So, let's talk about inner HTML. So inner HTML is important, we use it a lot in JavaScript, uh, and we use it to replace things, to add things in. So inner HTML can be used to set and get content, all right? We can get things, and we can set things. So let's talk about get. When we get HTML from an element, all we're saying is we're gonna get the property and return it as one long string and including any markup that the element contains. All right? So when we say get element by its ID, uh, we're gonna get it and then we can get its values too. For example, if you try this, all we're saying is whatever is in um, that inner HTML or that, that element, I'm gonna save it in the variable called cam. So what is the value of this variable? Well, the, if you run this code properly, the variable cam should equal Howard. But let's talk about setting. So when we set things, we can set new content. We can change things around. Uh, 
And we did a little practice on that earlier when we replace things, right? We're setting its value. And by the way, when you're using set, you can actually drop in HTML too, right? Because this is inner HTML. You can actually add links or add images. So what is being set by inner HTML? So get element ID two, inner HTML equals cam. Now you're gonna have two div boxes. One will say how and one will say cam. So here's a code challenge for you now. Why don't you go ahead and create a inner HTML feature that replaces text with a picture? If you remember and you recall how to do uh, images in HTML, then adding a picture using inner HTML should be really easy to do. There's something that you should know, and I've saved this part for the end, is that think about your quotes. Remember, double quotes have to match double quotes, and single quotes have to match single quotes, okay? So double here, double here, single here, single here, all right? And just think about from outside in or inside out if you like. Uh, this is only part one. We've got more parts that we want to cover in DOM, but I think for now, this is like a good bite into inner HTML. I want you to practice the inner HTML. We're going to be using it a lot, and I need you to get really familiar with this, okay? See you later.